Good morning. It is good to see you all on this um, Sunday morning, and Dave, of all people, <laughs> it's so good to see you. Dave had surgery on Friday, and he is here. So praise God, and uh, we are thankful. Uh, a lot of, a lot of prayer has been uh, rolling recently, and uh, and we've seen the some of the results of that, and, and we're thankful. Uh, lots of announcements this morning. The uh, luncheon, which is following the service, is uh, going to be downstairs, and the ham with pineapple brown sugar glaze, green beans with bacon and onions, and rice florentine. It's, which not, most of you are probably not that fancy, but hey, you can eat fancy anyway, okay? It's, it's good. So head on downstairs. You can take it to go. And uh, you also can uh, eat in if you'd like to. And so we hope that uh, you will take advantage of that. Um, I also want to make a, a disclaimer. I did not ask for the snow today. Just want to say that. It is kind of pretty out there, but not my idea. Uh, the Mystery Theater and dinner is coming up, and that's, uh, that's what the, uh, the meal today is going to help defray some of the initial expenses that always come with doing that. The tickets will be on sale next Sunday. All tickets are going to be $25 a piece. There are going to be uh, three shows. There is going to be a May 6th and May 7th show, Friday and Saturday, starting at 6. And then there's going to be a special Mother's Day show, and that's going to take place Sunday the 8th, and that's going to be uh, at 2 o'clock. So uh, we ask uh, that you would consider that. Uh, we're, we're doing three because we're trying to keep more spacing, and so uh, the, uh, the numbers will be limited to 60 per uh, show. So just so you know that, and next week you may want to grab your, grab your opportunity. As we look at the announcements and the prayer concerns, I uh, would ask you to continue to lift up my sister Robbie and her neighbor, um, Eleanor Irway's son, Steve Georgia. I think Steve is doing well down in, in uh, South Carolina. And some of you may be thinking, you know, I could be doing well if I was in South Carolina. Uh, Jackie Hawkins' brother. Any updates on Adrian? Are things still continuing to roll? Good, 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 good. Uh, David Dewey Wright's dad, and uh, my understanding, well, Dave, why don't you give us a touchstone on that? Uh, my dad is doing well. Uh, this past Wednesday, we actually moved him up to my sister's. Her husband is retired, so he can be with him during the day, and so he continues to do well and, uh, and better than uh, you know, he was the last week. So, yeah, thank you all for your prayers. I wish I could claim it was my glasses, but it was my brain. I shifted uh, down one line. I uh, want to continue to lift up Linda Kurt's grandson. He is doing well. Uh, his next uh, appointment is a month away, and that is just such good news. And so we're thankful for that. Also want to keep the Brzezinski family in our thoughts and prayers. Uh, Meg is starting to improve, uh, and uh, so we want to continue certainly that improvement and uh, continue to lift them up. A uh, number of unnamed concerns and would ask you to uh, keep those in mind. The Gary Freeland family uh, and, uh, and let's keep praying for Dave until he's dancing down the aisle and uh, that'll, uh, that'll be a great day. And we have some others. Um, I have uh, two funerals scheduled this week uh, the first is on Tuesday for Kay Potter. Many of you will remember Kay. As I understand it, she used to sit in the back on this side. And, oh, on the other side. Oh, okay, there you go. And, and uh, it's been a while since she has uh, been able to be here, but we certainly want to continue to lift Kay up, or the, her uh, family and friends. Uh, on Wednesday, I have another funeral. Some of, this, some of you this will be a shock for. 
Charlie Gilbert died on Friday morning, um, early afternoon. I saw him Wednesday, and we had about two hours of conversation, and uh, Friday morning, he, uh, when Sue got up, he was uh, pretty much unresponsive, and, uh, and he passed very shortly thereafter. So please keep Charlie's family and, and uh, friends in your prayers. We, uh, we also have another person who is um, approaching that moment, uh, Virginia Rhodes. Uh, I've been to see her a couple times, and she is, she is headed for heaven, I believe, in the near future. So I would ask you to pray for her family and, uh, and for her as she goes through this time. Um, Kathy's brother, Lynn, we got a call on Friday, and he had a stroke. Uh, some paralysis on his left side. I'm not sure how significant, but I think it's it's fairly significant. Um, there, through the uh, processes of analyzing exactly what was going on, there was some more damage done at the stroke site. Uh, so there was some bleeding into the brain, and uh, so that's complicated things a bit more. We are headed down as soon as the service is done to go down and visit him. And uh, so prayers for Lynn and for Christina, his, uh, his significant other, and, and for the doctors and nurses as they work with him. Uh, we don't know what the future holds, but um, it looks like it's going to be probably pretty different from the past. And uh, so we ask for your prayers for them. Are there others that you'd like to lift up? Any joys you'd like to share? Always gladly receive joys. Okay, last thing I've got, um, we had a meeting on Thursday night here at the church. Uh, there has been a group which, uh, as, as a part of the process that the annual conference has been striving toward, which is to uh, get every church to do a church audit, which is not a financial a piece of paper that proves that everything balances. Uh, the church audits that we're talking about are an analysis of the church, where it's at, what's happening, uh, what has happened, and more importantly, what we would like to see happen uh, in the future, and especially in the near future. And so that meeting occurred on Thursday night. They gave us a bunch of uh, possible suggestions. We will be meeting it, at a future point sometime in the next couple weeks and uh, and you would be welcome to come to that we'll define that date and uh, we will let you know when that's going to be and uh, we'll talk about their suggestions and what ones we think we would like to really engage in and uh, and get rolling as we prepare to move into the future and I keep saying we and I do mean we uh, I will not be here as your pastor, but I will be a praying part of this community, I promise you. I will continue to lift this church up, and, uh, and it will be very easy to do. Um, Kathy and I love you guys. We love this church, and uh, it has been a, a, a great uh, seven years, and difficult times as well. I, I never anticipated anything ever happening like COVID. But uh, you are here this morning, which is proof that the church survives and that the body of Christ is victorious. And that's a, that's a praise. That is a praise. So, I would invite you to, as the body of Christ, to stand and join together as Kathy leads us in our opening prayer. We give you thanks, Lord Jesus Christ, for all the blessings you have given us, for all the pains and insults you have suffered on our behalf. O merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, we ask that we might know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly for the sake of your kingdom. Amen. 
Now would you remain standing and we will sing together Lord Who Throughout These 40 Days. You can see it on the wall or you can find it in your hymnal 269. be seated and join together with me for a time of prayer. Lord, we do thank you that we can indeed be together. We thank you for the freedoms that you give us and that we still maintain to be able to gather together in worship of your mighty name. We uh, thank you for the weather, even though it's not quite what some of us might be wanting at this point. We know the calendar says that it is spring, but out there it doesn't seem to be holding true as closely as we would like. But we thank you nonetheless, and we thank you for the, the, the bulbs that we see producing greenery coming up. And we thank you for the spring that is in the offing. We thank you for this service that you would guide and bless it. By your Holy Spirit, lead us. We pray for those on the extensive prayer list. We pray your wisdom and your will to be done in each of these cases. You know what needs to happen, and we thank you that you love these people even more than we do. We pray especially for those in the Ukraine and for the war that they are experiencing. We pray for a quick end even, an unprecedented and unexpected end with um, many lives saved because of that. We pray for our nation and for all of those around the world and the various things that we're experiencing. COVID and everything else, the shutdowns, the, um, the supply chain issues, you know what all is behind all of that and you know how to remedy it and we thank you and praise you that you were working on our behalf. We pray for our church, both worldwide and here in Owego, we pray for your blessing and your guidance and leadership in, in the many things that come before us that we need to make decisions about. We pray that we would listen to your Holy Spirit and make ones that are in, in alliance with you uh, for you to be able to move freely and that your will would be done. We pray for our deep need for healing and for conflict resolution right here in Owego. 
You know what has gone on before and what can happen from here on out. We pray for mercy and forgiveness for one another. And we seek with all our hearts to mend these divisions that are between us right now. Dear Holy Spirit, we need your healing so badly. Help us too as we move through this study of you during these services, that it would become so much more than an intellectual exercise. Help us to open our hearts to you and seek to learn of you, for you are a most excellent teacher. Help us to be, in turn, excellent students. Please make real to us who you really are, how loving and kind you are, and we thank you for doing this. Thank you, too, that you are patient and understanding, for you know all about each one of us inside and out. Help us to stop trying to hide from you our imperfections. You know all about them, and you love us anyway. Thank you for that. How you do this is beyond our understanding, but we are indeed grateful. Thank you for all the gifts that you bestow upon us. Help us to eagerly seek to realize what ones you have given each of us, and help us to become faithful and brave in exercising these when you call us to. Help us to live our lives more and more in unity with you and with each other, so that your power and might and love are so compelling that others who do not know you three, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, cannot help but to be drawn to you and become part of the body of Christ as well. To this end we pray, and now we ask you to join us in the prayer that you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now the children's message. Well, we actually have someone here today, and I don't know if she would like to come up front with her dad, and maybe her Sunday school teacher, even. And if she would rather not, I understand. Okay, well, that's fine and dandy, and I do understand. Sometimes it's hard when you're the only one. But uh, I have something that came this week, which, uh, which is really kind of cool. Uh, every year in the past, I have gotten the, an envelope just like this. In over probably, well, the first church I was at, it came through the secretary. After that, I got it. Uh, and it's from the National Pen Company. And that's not two ends being from Pennsylvania. That is one end, which means they've sent me, anyone want to guess? A pen. Yes. It is a present just for me. And it says, Owego United Methodist Church, 261 Main Street, Owego, New York, 13827. And they give you a pen. Isn't that wonderful? But... They're hoping that you'll buy more. Now, since I've been here, um, you know the old expression, the buck stops here? Well, the pen always stopped at the secretary's desk. <laughs> and, and quite frankly, she used it more than I would have anyway, and I certainly understood. But now, I got the pen. And this, since I'm retiring, this is probably the last pen I'll ever get from the National Pen at pens.com, um, Shelbyville, Meyer, Mills Road, and so forth, Shelbyville, Tennessee. Okay, so this is probably the last one I'll ever get. 
And so I got this wonderful present in the mail. I knew what it was. I opened it up, and can, I don't know if you can see the color. No. Purple. Purple. Now, if you haven't figured out by now, through comments I've made, um, that uh, purple is my favorite color, let me say purple is my favorite color. Anybody else like purple? Ah, all right. Well, it, it, I heard that. <laughs> that, you know, obviously this is not home on the range because that sounded kind of like a discouraging word. <laughs> eh, you know, no deer or antelope playing in your yard. Anyway, this was a present, and it's my favorite color, and I thought, wow, how cool. You know, the last present that the National Pen Company sends me is in my favorite color, and it has that, you know, that soft, sort of rubbery, velvety feel to it. It just, it's, it's, a, it's really a neat pen, and I like it. I thought, what a great thing to get as a present. Interestingly enough, today we're going to start talking about spiritual gifts, which are sort of like a present that God gives to the church, like these guys send a pen hoping that you will buy more pens so that you can make a present of those pens to people at church and people who visit, that kind of thing. God gives us a present, a spiritual gift, and he gives it to us so that we might share that with the rest of the church. And, uh, and God's presence, with a T, uh, don't come in purple or red or green or blue. They come in you. Whatever color you are, whatever color your hair is, if in fact you still have your hair. Um, and that present and those presents those spiritual gifts that he gives to you to give to the church are so that everyone would know about God's presence with a C. Because the National Pen Company wants to remind us that they are out there for us and they will sell us all the pens we want. And God wants us to know that he is out there for us, not just out there, but in here. So God is present with his presence. The gifts that he wants to give to this church through each of you. And boys and girls, I think that God does spiritual gifting oftentimes with you. Maybe it's easier for you to display some of those things than for some of us adults. And so we're going to be talking about spiritual gifts for a while now. And uh, we're just going to start with an overview today during the sermon. And then we're going to get down to business. Uh, I will say that we're going to take time off on uh, Palm Sunday and on Easter. We won't be talking about spiritual gifts in those two Sundays. Then we're going to pick right back up again. But we'll talk more about that during the sermon. But I just want you to remember that God gives us presents, gifts, so that he can show his presence that he's here to everyone who is around you. And that's why he gives us those gifts. Let's, uh, I actually, um, I, I know that the, the one person we have here who might have come up, and I don't blame her a bit, is an artist. Definitely, uh, definitely an artist. I wondered, uh, Coraline, would you like this pen? It's, it's got black ink and it writes really. Okay, so maybe that's something you could use in your art. Do you like purple? All right. Winner, winner, Chicken purple milk. penner Ham or something. Dinner. Ham dinner. <laughs> All right. Well, let's, uh, let's all bow our heads and let's pray together. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. For your spiritual gifts. For your spiritual gifts. And we thank you. And we thank you. 
that you are always with us. You are always with us. So thank you for the presence. So thank you for the presence. And thank you for the presence. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. As, uh, as we move into a time for preparation for the giving of our tithes and our gifts and our offerings, I would encourage you to uh, be in prayer about those things that God is calling you to engage in in the ministry of the church. And uh, that sometimes takes the place of, uh, it, ta it takes place in our financial offerings. It takes place in our sharing of our spiritual giftedness with one another. And it takes place in the time and effort, the words we speak and the things that we do. One thing at a financial level that has occurred, and, uh, and I really want to mention to you, is that the brake system, as I understand it, in the motor which runs the elevator out here, uh, has given up the ghost. And um, I, I don't think that, uh, that there's any way that spiritual giftedness is going to happen in the elevator, which basically means we have to replace the electric motor, along with some other subsequent things. Uh, the reality is that's going to cost us about $7,500. And, uh, and so we are working with some limited resources, as everyone is in these times, and we understand that. But I did want to put that out there and ask you to pray about it. And if at some level you feel like God is, uh, is calling on you to uh, help defray that cost, um, we would invite you to do so. Uh, in addition, we have an advanced special number for gifts that you would like to make sure go to the Ukraine. And, uh, and the wonderful thing about being a United Methodist in something like that is found in the fact that because we have the system set up that we do, when we have an advanced special, every penny goes directly to the issue that is listed as that advanced special number. So in other words, uh, none of that money is defrayed to help get things there. None of that money is defrayed to help pay for people who are working in that system. Every penny goes directly in aid to the Ukraine. And, uh, and that's, that's one of the really cool things about being a United Methodist. And uh, among others, there are others, but that's one of them. So uh, if you would like to make sure that you earmark a gift for the Ukraine, you can do that, and we will make sure it gets to the right place. So a couple of financial things in that to pray about, and also as we are looking ahead to spiritual gift of this, um, you know, what is God going to be showing you that's going to lead you in ministry in the next year? two years, ten years, fifty years, however uh, much time we have to serve him in this point, and then maybe even into eternity. We don't know exactly how that's going to work. But pray about those things, if you would. And open your hearts and your minds to the presence of the Holy Spirit speaking to you in that. So I invite you to do that as we prepare for uh, the uh, offering, which you will be able to leave in the plates as you leave the worship time this morning. So let's take some prayer. Dear Lord, we do come before you with our tithes, our gifts, and our offerings. Lord, we give back a portion to you of what you have already given to us. We give it gratefully and thankfully that we have things that we can do to thank you for your goodness to us. 
But Lord, we do know that it isn't just our, about our money, but it's about our hearts and our spirits. So Lord, we do invite you to continue to lead us in the ways that you would and help us to give of ourselves, of our bodies, our hearts and our minds and our spirits to do what you're calling us to do and to serve you more and more fully each day of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. And now, would you stand and join together in our second hymn, which is Jesus Keep Me Near the Cross. It's on the wall, but it's also on page 301 if you want to read and find it in the hymnal.
And we have quite a number of verses in the scripture to read. Oh, we're going to read the scriptures afterwards. Who knew? Well, to be continued. Listen to him first. <laughs> I, and Dave, I just want to thank you for protecting me from myself by slowing down the transition back to the verses. I, that was, that was, you're, you're, a, you're a good man, Charlie Brown. Anyway, <laughs> that was a wonderful uh, accompaniment. And uh, I certainly would have chosen it as well, but it did get a little tricksy at times. <laughs> so uh, uh, what, a, what a blessing. It, it is Lent, and I thought, you know, it's, it's time to do some Lenten hymns, and uh, that, that definitely is one of my favorites. Uh, I, I love Lord Who throughout these 40 days as well, and uh, minus, mind you, that's T-H-R-O-U-G-O-U-T, uh, as opposed to T-H-R-E-W, <laughs> you know, I, I'm sorry. Anyway, we're going to do it different today. Now, some of you will be surprised that Steve Palinowski or Bob Andeka weren't up here because of the amount of reading which is going to take place. <laughs> they usually get nailed with, you know, the massive, massive uh, amounts of uh, scripture. Uh, and it, I don't plan it that way at all. Uh, it's just how it turns out. Today, Kathy is suffering for them. So, uh, we, we are going to get into... Um, the scripture passages which talk about spiritual gifts. And, uh, and she is going to read them. I want you to listen to those after I talk to you, and, and not extensively, about spiritual giftedness. Now, spiritual gifts are differentiated from spiritual fruits in the scripture. We've just gotten done talking about the different kinds of spiritual fruits. Spiritual fruits are things, by now you ought to be able to say this with me, spiritual fruits are things that God is developing in every single Christian. Every single one of those spiritual fruits is being developed in every single Christian. Now, you may say, that's a surprise. Because my husband is a Christian, and I don't see every one of those growing in him. Well, we, we grow at different speeds, and we grow at different levels. And God may be working on one spiritual fruit, bringing it to fruit at one point, and he may be working on another one to bring it to fruit in us in another thing. But spiritual fruits are things that God is giving us, working in us, by virtue of the fact that we are Christians. Okay, so what's the difference then? Well, spiritual gifts are particular gifts that God gives us in a miraculous and, uh, and really powerful way to be the church. Now, if you were uh, driving a truck for a living, okay, you would be driving the truck, but you would be depending on other people to build the truck that you drive, to fix the truck that you drive, and, uh, and there are uh, people who will be scheduling the truck that you drive, and without every single one of those, what would happen to your job? Wouldn't be there. Yeah. Yeah. And so it is that in spiritual giftedness, there are all kinds of things that need to happen in the church if the church is to be the church. Now, these, uh, again, are uh, gifts from God. And every single one of you who isn't Christ is going to, to have or already has spiritual gifts at work in you for the good of this body in this particular body of Christ. And so uh, Kathy's going to read in a bit uh, a listing of those different spiritual gifts, things that are needed in every body of Christ, in every church. 
so that they can be the church. Now, churches are different, wouldn't you say? There are some gifts that are going to be more prevalent in one church and less prevalent in another because this church may have a slightly different assignment in the kingdom. And so as you listen to these gifts, uh, you're going to say, well, I don't know that I've really seen that one or heard that one. Uh, but there may be churches where that one is really prevalent and everybody, uh, everybody there is very aware of it. In our church, we have needs like every other church. And God does not leave his people needy. Now, one of the questions you have to ask yourself is, am I willing to receive this gift, which is not based on your abilities or your skills. God may use your skills to play to the work of the gift that he gives you, if you hear what I'm saying, but it's not about that. So in other words, God may give you a gift and it's like, wow, that, that's a, I, I really wasn't aware of that. That doesn't sound really like me. And what I would say is maybe that's because um, that's what you're supposed to sound like in God's eyes. That's where he is growing you. That's where he is taking you. That's what he is doing in you. And... Uh, how do, you, how do you discover this? Well, I'm going to talk about that in a minute, and then we'll go to this, to the reading. Um, I think most of us probably have more than one or two spiritual gifts. There are some that are more prevalent than others in us. And, uh, and again, as you hear the list, uh, you're, you're going to... Uh, you, you may be able to identify immediately some of the things that really apply to you, your life, your ministry in the church, because that's what spiritual gifts are given, is so that you can minister to the congregation in a particular way that God has chosen and gifted you for. Spiritual gifts are supranatural. They are outside of and above nature. They come directly from God through the Holy Spirit in your life. Without spiritual giftedness, the church cannot be the church. This is an imperative if we are to be the church and serve in the kingdom of God. And, uh, and some spiritual gifts are much more apparent. Some spiritual gifts are very obvious. And, uh, and the lack of some spiritual gifts may be very obvious on a given day. Uh, teaching and preaching. You know, um, I'm up here. Some of you may be willing to uh, forgive my inadequacies simply because you know that you would rather not be up here. So thank heavens that Jamie's got that one or at whatever he's got of it, um, you know. And, uh, and so there are some that, are, as I said, are really obvious. Others... Uh, helps is uh, is one definition for one. Um, are you are you a helper? Do you find that most of your ministry revolves around helping others quietly, un, uh, unobtrusively, sometimes unnoticed and unspoken? Now let me ask you this. Does that make it a lesser spiritual gift than preaching and teaching? And what I would say to you is absolutely not. You know, there are, there are some higher gifts, but I think the higher gifts are ones that most of us should, uh, should really be looking at because I think there's, there, are, there are some gifts that don't, aren't as apparent, and there are some gifts in each of us, I think, that are going to be more apparent. And, uh, and so none of us is better than anybody else when it comes to spiritual giftedness. And the only imperative in it, really, is that we respond to it so that we are serving God correctly. Have you ever done something that you knew, you knew that you knew that you knew? 
it was exactly what you were supposed to do at the time and in the place. Nine times out of ten, that I think that happens almost exclusively because of spiritual giftedness and that feeling is something the Holy Spirit is inspiring in you to say, yeah, there's a reason why that feels good. There's a reason why that's important. And that is, I am preparing you for ministry in that area for now and for the future. Every single person here has spiritual gifts. Every single one of you who is here has spiritual gifts. So, how do we get a sense of what those might be? Because I think I've, I've talked to people at times who have sort of felt like it was arrogant to think that they had a spiritual gift. It's like, well, gosh, I don't know. I, you know, I, I, uh, uh, I'm not sure. And, uh, and I've had people who have, have uh, run like I was presenting the plague when I've suggested to them they might have a spiritual gift of, of a particular bent. Okay? But the reality is that every single one of you has a spiritual gift. So how do we come to a determination of what they may be? Well, you know, interestingly enough, there are tons of books out there with uh, tests at the end, and I hate the word test, surveys, uh, that's not quite the word either, assessments, how's that? Is that a better word? You guys like that better? Okay, we'll call it an assessment, spiritual gift assessment. And, uh, and they will ask a whole series of questions, and you will fill out an answer sheet, and then from that, you will take a look and see what things come out the most strongly and, uh, and I'll tell you, that has, that has proven to be so accurate in so many people's lives. Now, how many of you have done something like this before? Okay, you're going to do it again anyway. All right? And, uh, and we're going to do it next Sunday. I will have answer sheets available to you and you will fill them out during the service because next week's sermon is going to be Jamie asking you, I, I don't know, a number of questions. <laughs> There's a lot of them. And we're going to try and get through them all in, in that one service. Now, if you're watching at home, um, hey, come. <laughs> you know, you are welcome to come. I'm going to invite you to put your name on your answer sheets. And if you leave them... I will score them. And then you will be able to pick them up the next week as we begin. Well, it, that'll be, uh, actually, that'll be uh, Ash, or, uh, yeah, Palm Sunday. So it, you'll get them back a couple weeks in the future. If you do them at home, and what's going to happen is I'm going to send out an answer sheet with the mailer, with the, the emailer, with the uh, bulletin. Okay, so that will be added in as an attachment. And you will be able to print off that answer sheet and fill them out at home. And I would in, invite you to, uh, um, you'll, you'll hang on to those until we can score them, and I'll tell you how to score them the Sunday after Easter. And then we're going to start really digging in to individual gifts of the Spirit, okay? And you will have a sense of what your spiritual giftedness is. What has God done? What is God doing? What will God do with you in the kingdom? Now, I hope that sounds somewhat exciting to you. Uh, I also hope that, and, and, I'm, and I don't mean this in a negative sense, but this is a setup. Because it is my intention to give Nancy, when she comes a listing of uh, individual and spiritual giftedness of that individual so that she will have a sense of people she can tap. And my intention in doing that would be to give her and you all a head start in the work that lays before you as a congregation, as a body of Christ, in the kingdom of God. Okay? 
So that's why I'm doing it. I'm not, I'm not outing you, you know, to Nancy. I'm not. But I am. You know, in the very best sense of that. That's my goal. That's my purpose. That's what we're going to be doing. And, and if you don't want to share that with anybody, uh, okay. But what, what, a, uh, uh, what a loss, you know. Because when we're given a gift... Um, we don't want to refuse it. I've, I've often used this example, and I'm going to quit with that and uh, turn it over to Kathy for a grand reading of the, uh, the gifts of the Spirit. You have an Aunt uh, Zelda, for lack of a better name, and you don't like Aunt Zelda very much. Aunt Zelda asks you to do things you don't want to do, and Zelda's fairly presumptive. And, uh, and the, the thing that you know about Aunt Zelda is that she is always going to give you a Christmas present. You also know that Aunt Zelda knits. And you have a pretty good idea what that Christmas present is. Because it's the same one you've received every year since you were five years old. And that gift is a scarf, a hat, and mittens every year. And again, Aunt Zelda's not your favorite aunt. So uh, one year she mails you a package and, you know, you never bother opening it. Because you know what it is. You have no particular interest in that. And, and you know, since Aunt Zelda sent it, you don't feel compelled to really do anything with it. So you stick it in the hall closet and it gets shoved behind the hats and the various other things. And one day a blizzard hits and you go out and you begin to attack the snow and, uh, uh, and as you are out there for hours you get colder and colder and wetter and wetter and by the time you get done, you come in with a good cold, which turns into pneumonia, and you die. Worst case scenario. Well, I, this is my example. <laughs> and as you stand at the pearly gates, and St. Peter says, what happened? You weren't supposed to be here yet. God gave you Aunt Zelda to knit you a scarf and a hat and mittens every year of your life from the time you were five. And if you'd been wearing it, if you'd been using that gift, you would still be alive. And all of the mourning that's going on down there in your family and friends would not be happening because you would have used the gift. And the sense of loss that they're experiencing would not be if you had used the gift. Do you get it? Yeah. The, the loss to the church when we do not use our gifts that God has given us for the purpose which he has given them to us for. <laughs> that wasn't correct grammatically. I'm sorry. But when we don't use the gifts, folks, you know, God gives them to us for a purpose. It is his desire that we use them. That's why he gives them to us. And we are bereft without a full display of the gifts of the Spirit in the body of Christ. Kathy, would you read us a list from four different passages of Scripture? from the New Testament, which talk about the gifts of the Spirit? Why, I would love to. And uh, I did a quick ad addition. I think there's like 47 verses. That's all. So make yourselves comfortable, but not too comfortable, because you really want to hear these things. And don't listen to them just with your physical ears, but listen to them with your heart and opening yourself to God that he might speak to you as you hear these words. So, here we go. 
The first section is in Romans 12, verses 1 through 8. I appeal to you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you may prove what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For, the by, for by the grace given to me, I bid everyone among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith which God has assigned him. For as in one body we have many members, and all the members do not have the same function, so we, though many, are one body in Christ, and individually members one of another. Having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them, if prophecy in proportion to our faith, if service in our serving, he who teaches in his teaching, he who exhorts in his exhortation, he who contributes in liberality, he who gives aid with zeal, he who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. So now we move to 1 Corinthians 12, the whole chapter, 31 verses. Oh, wait a minute, I just noticed this is kind of bent up and crinkled. There we go. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were heathen, you were led astray to dumb idols, however you have been moved. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of working, but it is the same God who inspires them all in every one. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another the working of miracles. To another prophecy. To another, the ability to distinguish between spirits. To another, various kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are inspired by one and the same spirit who apportions to each one individually as he wills. For just as the one body, just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For by one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews and great Greeks, slaves or free, and all were made to drink of one spirit. For the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would be the hearing? If the whole body were an ear, where would be the sense of smell? But as it is, God arranged the organs in the body, each one of them, as he chose. If all were a single organ, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the parts of the body which seem to be weaker are indispensable. 
and those parts of the body which we think less honorable, we invest with the greater honor, and our unpresentable parts are treated with greater modesty, which our more presentable parts do not require. But God has so adjusted the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior part, that there may be no discord in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together. If one member is honored, all rejoice together. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then workers of miracles, then healers, helpers, administrators, speakers in various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? But earnestly desire the higher gifts. And on to Ephesians 4. Are you guys still with me? Still awake? Okay. Wave a little. Okay. Very good. All right. Here we go. Ephesians 4, 1 through 6. I, therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all lowliness and meekness, with patience, forbearing one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism one God and Father of us all, who is above all and through all and in all. Lastly, 1 Peter 4, just two verses, 10 and 11. As each has received a gift, employ it for one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. Whoever speaks, as one who utters oracles of God, whoever renders service, as one who renders it by the strength which God supplies, in order that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To him belong glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. Okay, you hung in there, I think. Let's stand now and sing our last hymn, which is Into My Heart. Oh, it's not, it's found in The Faith We Sing, page number 2160, or it's on the wall. Okay, the benediction you're going to participate in. Now, in my mind's eye, I, I feel like I remember hearing this first in a movie with uh, Errol Flynn on a ship with great sails. 
And it was a pirate comment, so you can do your best pirate voice if you want to. Okay? There you go. And, we'll, and, and let's not get too much because we don't want this to turn into an R-rated service. Anyway. All right. So, and, this, and the benediction is all for one and one for all. Okay? And let's, uh, let's say that like we mean it, like we're on this ship. And, and we are all for one and one for all because you know what? We're on a ship. And we are called to be all for one, knowing that there is one for all. So let's belt this thing, all right? All for one and one for all. Amen. Amen. All right. Arr. Arr. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah, didn't I?